is religion holding black people back? Yes and no. And here's why. <laughs> Welcome, 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 Black. Welcome, welcome, Black, everybody. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? I hope everyone is feeling good. I'm really excited for this video. This video is definitely going to be some tea. Um, not in terms of gossip, of course, but just in terms of some real world things when we're thinking about is religion holding black people back? Is it holding us back? You know, how do we feel about it? And essentially, I'm gonna just be talking about like the historical context of the fact that Christianity was definitely imposed on Africans as they were brought here as slaves. I will kind of be talking about the religion of Christianity, Catholicism in general. Um, and yes, now I would like to preface this with the fact, and this is just a period point blank, the fact that I am Christian, I do identify as a Christian, um, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and this is not at all, at all, at all, at all going to be a video that's meant to sway you one way or another, I promise. It's really not going to be like that. But it's just going to be breaking down the real historical realities that, you know, religion has had black people messed up. And I think as in some cases still continues to do so. So go ahead, get comfortable. Thanks for tuning in. I'm excited to get into this. And here we go. So when we're thinking about the historical context, so when Africans were kind of brought over around 16, 19 and onward, actually about 20 to 30% of them were actually Muslim, so not Christian. And a lot of Africans had maybe heard of Christianity because obviously like it was a thing, but they actually really practiced African traditional um, spiritual like religions and things like this. And all that to say, there were not many Africans, probably none, almost known at all that actually like were Christian and in general when we're thinking about the history there's this really weird dichotomy because the th fact is that the Bible was used to justify slavery so the Bible was used by slave masters to justify slavery and I'm gonna get into like exactly how but at the same time the Bible and religion for you know Africans who are brought over slaves X Y and Z religion and the bible actually like helped them through some of the terrible conditions of slavery in terms of you know being raped being beaten being you know forced to do x y and z being a slave in general a lot of times it was kind of pushed on them like well you know if you suffer in this lifetime like the next one will be great the next one will give you what you want like your aunt like you know the stars whatever whatever it was very much like pushed on that so it was just odd because it's like religion was used to like keep the slaves down and keep them in this mindset of well there were slaves in the bible so and you know y'all were brought here through you know maybe you were supposed to maybe the bible maybe god wanted y'all to work for me as this white man but at the same time it was like helpful to know like you know what um it was just helpful in terms of the mindset and i can't even begin to try to imagine that but to think like you know i'm working really hard i'm being told what to do x y and z but i know that when i die i'm gonna x y and z so it's just this kind of weird dichotomy going on now all this information is like pretty like readily available but if you want like a specific source um i read this really great article by julie zosmer and um, it's basically kind of like outlining all of this. When it comes to like how exactly white slave owners would kind of like brainwash these slaves, um, this is kind of how it would go. Some theologians said it was Providence that had brought Africans to America as slaves since their enslavement would allow them to encounter the Christian message and thus their eternal souls would be saved. And some ministers promoted the idea that Africans were descendants of Ham and Ham was cursed in the book of Genesis. So that's also a reason why like they were brought here and enslaved and should be enslaved. And there's this guy, his name is Mark Knoll. He's like currently a researcher for in like American Christianity. And he was basically, he knows what he's talking about. And he was basically like, that was all false. Like he was like, there is no 
proof. There is no like saying that that actually was even said, even real. Um, and he was basically like, that was literally something that was just made up by the Europeans and used to justify the enslavement of people, of the African folks. So that's the thing too. It, and it's similar to the William Lynch letter. I, I don't know which video I talked about it in, but how it was absolutely like false that um, there was like light skinned folks in the house and dark skinned folks outside the house when it comes to slavery. Like that was false. I gotta find that video. I'll link it below if you're interested. But yeah, it's just wild thinking about like, some of these things that were passed down and that were so like life changing for black folks were literally things that were made up like poof, like what? And then something else that slave owners would also do to justify enslavement is they'd be like, well, the Israelites in the Old Testament had slaves. So like if since slaves are in the Bible, y'all are just the ones, you know, the whatever, whatever, or we should just mimic the Bible on real life, <laughs> you know, current day or their current day and just make y'all the slaves. So that was also something else that they would use. So the reality is, is that, you know, the slave masters were working, the white folks were working. But here's the thing about my people. Black people were resilient, <laughs> were amazing. The second that black folks learned to read, guess what they picked up? Guess what the first thing they picked up was? The Bible. They picked up the Bible, they were like, all right, you know what? Frederick Douglass is out here reading. <laughs> Let's all start reading. Let's see what they're what they're saying. We understand what they're saying, but they keep mentioning this book, this Bible that's justifying or whatever, whatever. Let's pick it up and read it. And once slaves, uh, former Afri African slaves, what have you, started reading the Bible, like everything switched because it was like they started essentially like writing for and protesting for their liberation in terms of being like well it doesn't really justify slavery in the way that you're thinking or show me where that passage was where y'all talked about you know where the descendants of ham and x y and z so i will say that is an act of that alone i think is a, definitely an act of resistance but it's something that is absolutely real when it term when it comes to the fact that black people just didn't necessarily, necessarily know how to read but the second they realized found out how to read they were like, bet, no, y'all have justified our enslavement for too long, it's done. So that's the resilience of black people to this day. And unfortunately, there was a need to do this because the slaves realized like the only way for us to even try to be heard is if we're speaking the same language as the slaveholders, as our oppressors, uh, various things like that. Now, fast forward years later, years, years later, we can actually see that during the civil rights movement, religion was definitely used, but then there was actually also a push for learning about new African religions. Not necessarily new, I'll say that, but like new to, you know, maybe black folks, um, black Americans at the time. So there was kind of a push, and I would still say currently ongoing today, of kind of like black folks feeling the need to kind of reject Christianity and embrace some of the African spiritual traditions. And in general, a lot of folks, a lot of young black folks have started to embrace not only Islam, but kind of just like reject Christianity and question like, okay, why aren't we talking about racial injustice in the church? Or why aren't we talking about, you know, some of these issues that we really face um, in the church, things like this. And in general, kind of have started to like back away from, I would say maybe the religious paradigm of Christianity. And if, you know, folks are Christian or whatever, move a little bit closer to maybe like more of the spiritual aspects which I would say is a, li a lot less like, follow the Bible, read the Bible, what the Bible says, go to church every Sunday. I feel like that'd be, I would classify that as like the religious aspect and the spiritual aspect more of like, you know, I believe in God, I pray, you know, I'm connecting with my, you know, various things that like tap into your spirituality <laughs> in a way and you know, your relationship with God and things like that. So in general, that's kind of, of course it's a quick overview but just looking at how one christianity was definitely very much used to oppress black folks since the dawn of time and how now i think a lot of black folks are starting to kind of maybe see that and some might be feeling like all right maybe i should look into a new religion maybe i should pull back from like the 
Bible, 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 and just more of like my connection with God and Jesus and everything like that. So I definitely think there has been a journey when it comes to black folks and Christianity, especially when we're thinking about the fact that Africans weren't even like Christian. Like the Christianity in general is like a, a very white man, European thing that's like implemented onto, I would say all people, Americans, but probably people all over the world used in government and God we trust and things like this. So that's it for some historical context. Um, now we're gonna get into kind of like the issues that I see today, maybe why I decided to talk about this um, and yes. So now let's think about this question. Let's think about this question. Is religion holding black people back? Yes and no. And here's why. <laughs> okay, so for the yes, this is this is why I thought about it. And these are ways that I think religion can hold black people back. Okay, so <laughs> there's this show, it's called Married at First Sight. Comment below if you've seen it. This season has been really popular because of this situation I'm gonna talk about and it's, it's gonna be brief. Basically, there's this girl and this guy and, and they're a black couple, which is frustrating because they're like the only, one of the only black couples. There's this black couple and the guy is just trash. He's, he's narcissistic. He is just mean. He's bad to her. He tells her she's unattractive. He's toxic. He's just a bad dude and he shouldn't really be on the show. He shouldn't have gotten married. Here's the thing. The girl who he was like matched with, she's also obviously black. She, I feel like, uses God a lot to justify why she doesn't want to leave this man. Like, she's like, she's always like, God brought me here. And, and she's a, I think she's a smart woman. She's an accountant. So I'm like, she's a smart woman. But I feel like she's like, God brought me here. God put this man in my life. You know, I, I want a family. God is going to provide me. You know, we. I know you go through trials and tribulations. God puts you through trials and tribulations. But, you know, it'll all be worth it. And it's just like, sis, <laughs> no, like this man is trash. And I will say to me, this has some similarities, even though I talked about it in, I think like a couple of videos ago when I talked about like black women and you know, like how society wants us to, you know, date and do all these things and be this certain kind of woman um, in response to the whole Derek Jackson situation. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Jared Jackson, he's a relationship guru, found out he was cheating on his wife, him and his wife put out a video. And I just noticed in the video too, him and her, his wife, who he, he cheated on, um, were very much like, you know, God brought us together, God wants us to be together, you know, even though he cheated and I left, I came back because I, I know God was working through him and God brought us to back together and I'm just like, how do you know? <laughs> like, how do you know that's what God wants for you? And and maybe, and she said, I think she heard some signs or something. And, and everyone's journey, relationship with God is very different. But I just feel like with these two instances that I kind of saw, it just, it made me really want to make this video because I'm just like, I feel like sometimes religion is used specifically for women to kind of justify staying in problematic situations, staying with problematic men, you know, um, being whatever, 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 all the very, I don't know, all the very just gender role things also of like, my man wants me to cook, the Bible says this, but also God is gonna put me through struggle, but it's okay because like this man is gonna turn into someone new and be a good man, the man that I deserve and kind of bypass maybe their common sense or like their feelings and emotions. So in that way, for me, from outside looking in, in that way, I do think religion is holding these two women back. These two black women, religion is holding them back because I feel like they're, they're putting God and this idea of God wanting them to struggle over like their common sense or like their, what they actually, know what they should do which i think is to leave but you know everyone does their own thing so yes in that in, those, in that case i do think religion is holding us back and another topic that i'm also going to bring up i also think something else that unfortunately the religion of christianity does for the black community 
um, as well as keeping like women in their place and keeping some women struggling, I definitely also think it's used to justify homophobia or being homophobic, I'll say. And I feel like I saw this very apparently with the Lil Nas X video that came out, Call Me By Your Name, Montero, Call Me By Your Name. I could do a whole video on this. I could really do a whole video on this, but I'm gonna just keep it a blip, a little short. People were like, okay, he's dancing on the devil, x out, he's a devil worshiper, don't like him, you know, X, Y, and Z. Instead of, I think, seeing more of the message of this song, which I think was kind of like, well, y'all always saying gay people are going to hell, y'all all, y'all all say that, so here's what's gonna happen when, you know, according to y'all, this is what's gonna happen to me no matter how good of a person I am or whatever. Now I know the whole thing, he released the shoe and that's the whole thing, but I'm just talking about specifically for the video. I just feel like people kind of took it and ran with it. And I just feel like, I'm like, well, if you think about it, you know, this Christian religion and then people's fascination with wanting to be like, gay people are going to hell, whatever, whatever. I'm like, that's something that like, like people who are Christian and religion imposed. And I feel like Lil Nas X was just being like, well, y'all created this, I'm just gonna live it up. You know, like I'm just gonna be here, I'm gonna stand in it. I'm going to like, you know, since this is what y'all are saying is gonna happen to me. So I don't know, I, I just think in that case as well, I think people definitely miss the message, <laughs> what I think, and comment below what you think, because I know there's a lot of different opinions, but I just think in that way also, I think the second people saw devil and you know, the references to the Bible, they were like, uh-oh, like what is this? This man is, you know, a terrible person and he's whatever, and he's a devil worshiper, which I don't think is the case. And I think missing his whole message and people using that as a kind of a justification to be homophobic are ways that I think religion, Christianity is holding black people back. Now that's for the yes. Now in terms of the no, I don't think religion is holding black people back. Me personally, I will say, I feel like I use my relationship with God, my religion, to make me stronger when there are times of uncertainty and even when things are great. But I will say, I definitely feel like I really rely on my common sense. And the way I think about it, I'm like, well, God gave me this brain. Like God gave me this brain. So obviously he wants me to use it and he wants me to follow my heart and he wants me to, you know, and if I pray and things like that. So I feel like, and I think it's great. I think, <laughs> I think my life is, you know, it sucks sometimes, but I think like I've been able to really rely on and look at religion in a very different way than some people because I do feel like I can, so I, all that to say, I don't think religion holds, will hold you back if you really kind of just make up your mind for yourself and maybe don't take certain things so literally. Like, I, I think that's the key for me anyway. Comment below what you think, but I think in my life, the way God is working through me, I don't think that religion is holding me back. But then again, I don't think gay people are going to hell. I don't think women, you know, deserve to be like, you know, um, in the kitchen and, you know, and be the, the gatherers while the men are like the hunters. And, you know, like, I feel like even though there are these strong things that maybe the Bible will claim, I don't necessarily like buy into every single one of those things, but I feel like my relationship with God and you know my faith in God and and I just feel like I just want to make sure I use my brain, use my common sense. Like if something doesn't feel right, you know, for me to leave and not think, well maybe God wants me to stay. Well maybe, you know, X Y and Z. Now, I'm not putting myself on pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying for me answering this question for myself and what I think and see, I don't think religion is holding me back. I don't think religion holds black people back if they don't let it, if that makes sense. But I think if you let religion hold you back, it's going to hold you back. And that's just the T. In general, I will say I do think there is a problem of people. Um, and I'm not, this is, this might get shaky because I'm like, I don't want to push anything you know on whatever but in terms of a z what i see looking out <laughs> i think that sometimes people take the bible a little too literally <laughs> just just a little bit because and and not to not to not justify the bible you know iconic text but <laughs> i think that at the end of the day the bible is a collection of stories 
So it's not to not justify it, but I'm saying, what if there's a bunch of other stories that just weren't included in the Bible? What if there were stories about gay people living it up? <laughs> like, what if there were stories about women running countries and, you know, like, who knows? We don't know because those weren't the stories that were put in the Bible. So I will say, I, I also want to, you know, think about that as well. And, you know, I know a lot of people talk about this, but the Bible says some wild stuff. It really does. And I'm going to read one passage. Leviticus 15. When a woman has her regular flow of blood, the impurity of her monthly period will last seven days and anyone who touches her will be unclean till evening. Anything she lies on during her period will be unclean and anything she sits on will be unclean. Call me crazy, but I think a man wrote this. <laughs> and I don't know if it was Jesus. Like, I don't know if it was, you know, God's teachings that wanted us to necessarily take that and like run with it. But I think a lot of people do. So that's just an example again. But comment below. Let me know what you think. And again, I will say I am a Christian. So I'm like, I'm right here. But I'm just saying, I think sometimes it's important to take things with like a grain of salt and maybe, you know, tap into, you know, like whatever your spirituality is and not necessarily like the concrete aspect of let me like study everything the bible says and do everything and implement everything that it says but if you want to do that shout out to you because it's your life <laughs> all right y'all so i'm actually going to switch the tips from takeaways i know iconic different new innovation here we go <laughs> but yeah i actually want to do takeaways now because i feel like tips are like a little I don't know like here learn this like take this tip but I'm like I don't think I don't really want it to be like that I feel like it's more of like a takeaway based on the video and some of the stuff I presented so takeaway number one don't let religion control you so much that you shame judge ridicule people because that's not what God wants <laughs> in us either way and the Bible and Christianity has, was, and has been used to justify enslavement and to keep black people down bad, like down, down bad. So I will just say, I think that's really the first takeaway is just like, obviously have your own thoughts, but you know, when a lot of times Christianity will say, judge her, judge him, judge that person, you know, judge whatever, whatever. And I just think that kind of gets away from, you know, maybe what, what is best to do so that would be my first takeaway again not telling you how to live your life and you know whatever whatever but that's just something i will say to consider takeaway number two i would say trust that god is speaking through to you through your common sense <laughs> through your common sense god i really do think is speaking to us through our common sense through the people that are around us, our loved ones, you know, the people that are continuing to be in our life and maybe the people that we let go, they just somehow always seem to disappear. Like, I would just say, just, I, I think, and, and of course this everyone's different, you know, opinions, but I just say, let God speak to you through your common sense. If you are Christian, if you are spiritual, religious, whatever, and if you're not, I just think, you know, I think it's really important to rely on our, you know, gut instincts, common sense. And I think God is working through that. <laughs> and I think God is working through that and not, you know, other things. And takeaway number three, final one, I would say let's raise better generations. You know, I think a lot of us, oh, my, maybe around my age, probably obviously older, probably older too, were definitely raised in the church. And I will say, and maybe this will provide some context. I think I grew up in a, in a pretty like liberal church, I will say. So maybe that's why I think my experience might be a little different. And maybe folks who grew up in a very, you know, like conservative church, conservative Christian, you know, whatever upbringing or, you know, church setting or whatever, your experience will definitely be very different. But I will just say, I think there is a nod. Like I said, the research is showing that a lot of us young black folks are either starting to maybe like, I don't know, tap into more of the spirituality side of Christianity or explore other religions. I think 
think it's really important to make sure we're raising a generation that is at least the farthest from judgments and you know ridicule and shame because I think that we've seen what society looks like when people are shamed and ridiculed and judged and you know obviously we got you know people killing one another in terms of police brutality we've got you know wars and just I don't know things like that and of course that's like a big thing but I just think for the continuing generations even if you do want to raise your kids Christian I just think it's important to like be like yeah you're Christian God is here but gay people are not all going to hell <laughs> and like you know women shouldn't be stoned if they you know speak out against their husband <laughs> or you know like whatever so I just think we need to raise better generations do what do what you feel like whatever's comfortable to you if you're watching this and you're just like yeah well that's what it is and that's what I know that's your life if you're like hmm, maybe I will explore whatever I think that's you know I encourage all of that but I will just say let's just start thinking about like maybe our future generations you know everything like that that's all i have for you today folks thank you so much for tuning in i hope you got something from this video let me know what you're thinking i want to know what you're thinking let me know you know let me learn from y'all comment down below how do you feel about this subject do you think religion is holding black people back specifically christianity um and yeah check out your girl i post every other sunday so look out for aziza that's me <laughs> on sundays um if i haven't posted then it's the off sunday but either way black knowledge is black power stay black and beautiful and i will see you all next time